And welcome back on the show today. We already told you earlier that we're going to be having a wonder, wonderful young Nigerian. He is an activist, politician, and also an architect. His name is Badibo Rhodes Beaver, and he's here with us on the show on Hello Nigeria. He was actually PDP's candidate for Lagos West Territorial District. Thank you Thank for you coming for on the show me. with us today. Thank you, Thank you very me. much yes. for joining Welcome. us. Thank Mr. Badebo Rhodes Bible. Yes, Let's, yes, before yes. we go into the conversation today, we're looking at youth sustainability and you know youth development. Yes. I, I'm curious as to you know your decision to run. Okay. And at what point you decided to run? We know that last year the not too young to run bill made um, quite an effect. Yes, exactly. Was it was that some sort of reason that encouraged you, or why exactly did you decide to run? It was definitely encouraging. Uh, it was definitely encouraging because also the party that I was in was responsible for sponsoring the bill. It was Honorable Tony. He was a representative of Ushudi Solo at the time. And that, so just seeing them manifest these ideals was something that I was very excited about. But I had run for local government chairman in 2016 before that. And the reason one went into politics was mainly because I feel there are many problems that we are experiencing, especially as young people, many problems that we are going to have to deal with the consequences of. And it doesn't make sense to continue to just tweet and Facebook about it. We need to get involved. Because today we are in a digital world, you know. We cannot have analog leaders leading it and making decisions that we would then have to pay the price for. So I feel that it's very important that we get involved and participate at every level. And how did you feel running, you know, in the elections, knowing that we're fighting against big forces, the giant forces who had been in, 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 in politics in Lagos for years, people who are said to be godfathers, so to speak. Now we saw you going to the elections, run with all you had, and youth actually got support to support yeah, your yeah, cause. Yeah. How did that make you feel? I, I, it was a very good feeling. I, I think if anybody's a student of history, you know that any leader that we look at today started with this kind of story, right? The um, Bolatinibus of the world were going against the military government, right? The Herbert Macaulay's of the world were going against the British colonial forces, right? And these were people that the, the British Empire spanned the entire world. Mm. And there were young people that were going against, you know, colonialism and all that. So power is never giving. You have to take it. You have to push for it. You have to show that, you know, you, you are willing to fight for it. And I think that's what's important. And I think that the more youth get involved early, um, the better. Because in another 20 years, people will be telling me that, uh, that they are now not too young to run. Sure. And I'm too old to be playing politics and to be involved in politics. So I think it's important that our generation gets involved. And it was a very good experience um, running, especially in regards to um, the kind of support that we got from our youth demographic and just Lagos in general. Now, so, we've seen some other young people as well who, who ran the likes of Banky W, who had yes. a very good first out team. Yeah. We're looking at youth development, you know, what would you say have been some of the key lessons that young people have taken away from this just concluded elections? Well, the, the young people that paid attention, because not all of them did, um, I would hope that some lessons that were learned were that um, it's not, you're not too young, really, you're not too young. You just need to have empathy for the people and be willing to, um, to give your time and to give your energy to the process and you can actually potentially do very well. People are looking for people to connect to. And you find that the largest voting block are actually young people. So if a young person has the capacity, has the competence, and has the empathy to be able to do the work, you can actually do quite well in politics. So we should get away from this idea that politics is for these big men or these people in a certain age group. No. It's open to anybody that's willing to put themselves forward. But a lot of young people actually feel that politics is dirty. Now, even the people who have the capacity or intellect to actually hold the reins of government, they say they don't want to get involved because they feel, oh, it's dirty, and they don't want to get their hands sold. So how do we change that mentality from the young Nigerian? I think politics is seen as dirty in this country because for a long time we left it for lack of a better word, for dirty people, right? Our pastors, when I was growing up, were telling us that politics is bad, it's for bad people. Our parents were saying politics is bad, you don't have any business in politics. 
the entire religious system, education system, everybody said stay away from politics, it's for bad people. And then we now complain that bad people are controlling and have, and have defined what the narrative of a politician is. So the only way to change that is to have credible people that mean well for the country, that have the capacity to get involved. That's the only way. You need more people like that to come in and then balance the numbers out. So we have a truly representative state in which um, our politics is run. So okay. I know that you also, you also do youth mentorship. Yes. And you have a lot of young people under you that you mentor. Mm -hmm. And you've been doing that for over at least almost 10 years now. Mm. Good. Sorry. So what are some of the issues that you know from your experience as a youth mentor and one that helps in youth growth and development mm -hmm. in Nigeria that young people in Nigeria have? The little things that you feel as an average young Nigerian, these are the things you should work on in your life mm. if you have to get to that place that you dream of getting to. I, I feel that what, in my own experience, a lot of it is just direction, motivation, encouragement, and also just showing them the way that things are done. Because sometimes a lot of people are exercising a lot of energy, but it's just not going in the right direction. And that's why you find that they've not got into where they're supposed to go. So. Um, whether it's business or whether it is being able to get into a good school or being able to apply certain knowledge that you have gotten, that has always been the case. So the idea is always to first try to figure out what are you really passionate about. You know, you cannot just make decisions based on how much money will I get. Because the thing that will sustain that growth or sustain and allow you to become great at something is your initial passion for it. And once you find your passion for something, then the question now will be like, how can you monetize this? How can you actually bring something new? What's your value proposition? And then spending time with people to try and achieve that as well has been something that I'm very passionate about. Education is something I'm also very passionate about because the quality of education that we are getting in this country is really about 30 to 40 years behind the rest of the world. And we are going to be competing with the rest of the world in terms of just being a productive country, right? In terms of just being having a large amount of young people that are employed, right? And, and if, if the case is that you are not productive enough, then all you have to do or all you have is just to be continue importing. And when you are an import-based um, economy, there is a lot of unemployment yeah. in your country. So we need to build our skill sets. We need to build our manufacturing capacity. We need to take students and change the mindset from just consumption. People go to school so that they become a big man and be able to buy a Jeep. People are not training to be in school so that I will produce this, I will make this. I understand how this is made and I will improve it. I need to change the mindset of people from a consumption mentality to a production mentality. That way we'll be able to generate a lot more jobs. And especially with our youth bulge that's about to happen, our population is about to get to almost 200 plus million by 2050, it should be hitting about 300, 350 million. And majority of this group are youth. All right. Still speaking to youth and young people, I want to bring you back to politics for a bit. Okay. What would you say would be your dummy guide to getting into politics? There are many people who say that they already have dreams of ways that can effect a change in the political space but don't know where to start from. Okay. So for a young person who wants to get into politics, what are the rudiments, the basic things that they need to know? Okay, so the first thing is to decide on... Um, what party comes closest to your ideology. Now, I would first to say that there's very little ideology in our politics, and I know a lot of people might not want to hear this, but it's the truth. Um, that's why you can see people cross carpet, left, right, and center. You can never see that happen in England or a Republican become a Democrat overnight. It's not possible. But we'll get there. You know, politics is not like Rome. It's not built in a day. So first, you now need to find which party, you know, are you drawn to? Whichever one it is, doesn't matter. They now find where they're having their meetings. Go there, register. Start attending meetings. You'll be very surprised just by having your voice and being able to contribute to conversation. You start to be seen as somebody that is, you know, valuable to the political party. And then in your little bit, even if you're just buying um, cabin biscuits for the meetings or just buying water and cook, do something. So that way you're starting to show that you are willing to sacrifice. You can be seen as a leader. If people have problems, you don't have to do everything. If somebody complains, you oh, have my mother's, my mother is in hospital and her bill is 50,000, give them 2,000 or 5,000, you have contributed. 
That is what leadership is about. And once you start to establish yourself in your ward, you then start to recognize at your local government level. And then from there, you can decide whether you want to run or you want to support people. Mm. You know, politics is not just about running for office. It's also about just being part of the conversation because nice. it's a two-way street. It's not every four years you just vote and go home and sleep. You're supposed to be part of the conversation. So as a political party, you can hold your elected officers accountable. And right. I'm sure, as you're saying, this many people are feeling attacked right now because after the polls, everybody has gone to sleep. Well, so I'm hoping that this will be a wake-up call for a lot of us. And I, I say hope us so. Because me inclusive, yeah. we need to start having these conversations and holding people accountable. Now, I'm glad that you mentioned, you know, young people being taught service and stewardship and learning to give back and not always thinking of how to benefit yes. themselves. Unfortunately, there's a conversation going on on social media right okay. now, a conversation about internet fraud. Okay. So we find that our moral compass is a bit tilted. You know, we're, we're losing that balance. We're seeing young people people advocating for internet fraud. A certain young artist by the name Naira Mali has, you know, gotten into fights with Rugged Man, all because Rugged Man said internet fraud. Okay, although Rugged Man threw shade at him and called him a fraud star, you know, but Naira Mali has spoken so extensively, um, you know, attacking Rugged Man. We saw the video today. Alibaba is another celebrity that has lent his voice towards speaking against internet fraud. But we find that anybody who comes out to speak against internet fraud is torn down. So it's, they make it look like you are saying rubbish. Now, Mali actually said that internet fraud is a response to slave trade. What is your position? And where do we go from here? That's a very, very interesting question. I wish I could just stay away from it, but I'm going to answer it as honestly as I feel. Um, slave trade is something that I'm very passionate about. And I feel that what Europe did by building their economy on the backs of Africans and then later turning around to Afghans and saying, we did it, do it yourself, without donating themselves to come and build our own economy for free labor, was one of the most um, unfair things that this world really has seen. And then that gap, which now defines what is rich and what is poor, it has completely set the tone for the dynamics that we currently have in the world today. And also, the entire European Union then, were they looking at those slavers as bad people. Now, when those guys were doing these things that were doing and enriching their entire country, where, the, where other people say, are ah, you poor bad people? You poor are making this, our country so rich, blah, blah, blah. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I don't want us to conflate the issues because some people can say, okay, we are going to do this as payment back for this. I think fraud is fraud. You know, fraud is illegal. Fraud is something that harms a lot of people. Um, there are people whose entire life savings are taken away. They had no link to slavery. Their parents were not slaves. They were not slaveholders mm. or anything like that. So it's not fair to attack people that are completely innocent but are benefiting from a system that benefited from slavery and then just justify it by talking about slavery. And that. Internet fraud has a larger impact on the country because being able to get credit, access loans, um, international businesses willing to come into this country and actually create employment, always look at it as an issue because you are so fraudulent, you don't have the right law in place to be able to handle um, these fraudulent cases as well. Mm. So um, internet fraud also has a very bad effect on the image of Nigeria as well. And that is something that we all pay the price for. It's reflective in how hard it is to get visas in certain places. It's reflective of how hard it is for a businessman that just wants to travel to New York for a meeting and he cannot get a visa. You know, that guy that was doing his own internet fraud somewhere does not know that he has indirectly affected this man. So we are harming ourselves and it's not also well for the country. I think that I pray that one day, maybe in our lifetime, people will get reparations for slavery. And you know that in a legal way. I, I, I really, really, I, I totally agree with you as to how terrible that, you know, this yeah. is harming us as a people. We, we keep seeing our ratings when Transparency International exactly. ranks us. Our corruption index, it's, we can do better. There's terrible. so much more mm -hmm. that we can do. It's unfortunate, but it's, it's been a pleasure having you. Thank, Thank you. you so much Thank for sharing so the wealth and wisdom. And we are hoping that just as you have advised us not to go to the polls and relax. Yes. Thereafter, and come back after four years to vote. <laughs> and we don't see the same. Oh, no, no, Hope you're not, not discouraged by the outcome of the of election. Course. No, we're at the tribunal, so that is going well, and we are hopeful that justice will be served. All right.
and all the best with that. Thank you very much. How can we follow you on social media? Uh, my uh, social media Twitter is GRV Lagos. At GRV Lagos, Instagram is GRV Lagos, and on Facebook is just Bad Neighbor Roots Survival. Okay, thank all you right. so much. To enjoy more of this, our go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.